and welcome back to Chatterbox. I'm Siobhan, your host, and coming up on the show today, we'll be looking at Martin Scorsese's vinyl, which looks at the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle of the music industry in the 1970s. And with me today, I have two returning guests, media performance student Chris Ayanu and animal science graduate Chloe Soans. So welcome back. Hi. How are you doing? You right? So I'm good. I'm very good. Yes. Have you been watching vinyl? Because Indeed. that is yes. what we're going to be talking yeah. about. So, uh, episode one, we were introduced to Richie, our main character, our protagonist, his wife Devon, um, mm -hmm. and we ended on a domestic between the two, uh, where um, where Richie had went on a big bender basically, and, yeah. and, and had started taking drugs again and started drinking again, mm -hmm. habits that he'd actually discarded of um, in the past to save his mind. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to run VT and then we're going to have a chat about it. I had a vision, a sign, an epiphany. Hey, hey, hey Richie. What? Hey. Do you have any idea how screwed we are? Conference room, now. Bring me a solo artist or a band that this label can market in two weeks. Then how do I get ahead? It's all about the songs. Can you hum it? Does it make you want to dance? Or go out and kick somebody's ass? Take the vol, Manhattan South Homicide. I just need a few minutes. I want to know what's going on. Okay, so in episode two, we saw Richie regress. Um, the episode was actually called Yesterday Once More. Uh, episode one being yesterday, and there was some similar similar things happened. Uh, could you name a few that you some similarities that you saw from episode one to episode two? Yeah. Drug taking, alcohol, rock and Sex roll. Drugs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apart from the main themes that we've covered, <laughs> we had flashbacks again to sort of take us back to the present. So I mean, the first episode did it quite well in that we were chopping and ch changing back through his life to lead him up to where the episode started. Mm -hmm. um, and in this episode, we did it again more with Devon. Yeah. So we learned more about how his relationship with Devon had yeah. slowly progressed through yeah. the years. So we obviously, yeah, we learned a lot more about where his marriage came from. And actually we found out that Devon had been involved in the drug taking and the alcohol. And she seemed to be kind of, um, do, do you feel like she was kind of go to and in fro in about a relationship. She was getting caught up in these memories, mm -hmm. but then yeah. in the p present, she was kind of remembering her. She forgot her children at one point. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. So do you think that it could be a possibility that Devon might regress with him? Possibly, Possibly, yeah. 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 She doesn't seem like, well, when I first, like when we first got introduced to her, she seemed very maternal, but she didn't, I didn't really see her as a sort of character to sort of go into like drugs and alcohol, but then when you go back and back in the day when they first met, mm -hmm. and like you see that like, they're both in the, into the same sort of stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, you might you might see like that sort of character come out maybe a bit more mm -hmm. since. Um, mm -hmm. She's a fantastic from. actress, Olivia Wilde, who plays Devon. Uh, she, I think, she made it very believable that yeah. um, she was really in love with Richie. Like their their on screen chemistry is incredible. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, the, like I said, the, the elements of the past relationship that, that were quite dangerous, the drug taking, the rock and roll, um, do you think this might ruin their family home, the, the life that they've built up, their normal life? Do you think probably going to snowball into something bigger. Mm. I mean, Devin, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing sort of on looks here, but I'm going to assume that Devin was probably a fair bit younger than Richie when they got together and then she fell pregnant and they both seemed very well high very sort of romantic on the idea of um you know what what we're going to do when we move into our little house in the countryside and you know not don't do this anymore it's bad for the baby um and they've sort of they've, they've gotten to the peak of their domestic bliss richie's had his bender and they've both gone down uh, and even if she doesn't regress into the drugs there's probably going to be a regression into a less happy domestic you know house in the suburbs type of home you know mm -hmm. and obviously we saw the police turn up at their family home which could be a sign that trouble is on its way yep. uh the murder of um the, the, the murder scene that we saw yeah last Our big producer exactly yeah. the big radio producer big radio producer <laughs> uh 
in episode one, yeah. uh, we saw his murder, and we saw that Richie was present, and unfortunately, although he had nothing to do with the killing of him, he was there, he's mm -hmm. got blood on his hands. Yeah. And we can see the guilt dripping through yeah. his eyes. It's affected just, him pretty bad, yeah. 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 Do you think that there's gonna be a discovery about the murder, and it's gonna stop becoming a snowball effect, as you said, Chloe? I th yeah. Mm, I think the guilt might get to him and he might come he might, forward. Yeah, he might yeah. even say it himself. He might just lose it. I don't know. Like. Yeah, because technically he didn't do it. So part of you almost wants him to not get in trouble for if he just comes forward and says, I witnessed him being bludgeoned yeah. to death by someone. But that's not how it works. I mean, I love, I actually really like Richie as a protagonist. Yeah. And I, I feel sad to see him regress the way he is. But of course, there wouldn't be a storyline. Yeah, of course. No, it'd be boring. We're only two episodes in, so there's plenty, plenty oh, stuff gosh, to yeah. it. Exactly. Especially from Scorsese. Like, we're, we're not going to expect anything mild and boring from him. Yeah, and do you think there's any similarities between other parts of Scorsese's work in this episode? I know we talked about it, me and Chloe talked about it last week, about mm. uh, episode one. But did you see any more sim similarities with? Some yeah, Scorsese. some of it, um, I mean, for me, like, one of my favourite Scorsese works is Shutter Island. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that sort of the, the memories of um, his wife were presented in that film, of this sort of domestic bliss and this very idealised memory that slowly crumbles, is sort of similar, I think, or if it, if it isn't now, we're going to see it, is these idealised memories of how he met Devon and how their relationship progressed. They might actually not be accurate memories. They might actually be sort of, they're going to crumble as we go forward and he starts to remember the bad side of how they met. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we spoke about the building falling down last week. We didn't know if it was a dream. Uh, we didn't know if it was a hallucination. Uh, it turns out that we found out it was real. Yeah, it was Were real. you surprised? that? It, I'm it, surprised that he survived that, to be honest, yeah. because yeah. it was just, it was a whole building just collapsed all and on he top just of him. got up out the ground like and just carried on walking like nothing happened exactly and the um the part where devon thought that he was dead the um she found out he hadn't been home uh she found out about the building his car being in there um yeah. how did you feel when you saw the genuine upset and and worry in devon did you feel for her do you empathize for her yeah i yeah. felt i felt angry for her because you, you, when you empathise with like how little he almost sort of brushed over with, I'm fine, I'm fine, mm. but it wasn't really addressed that how long she would have spent wondering if he wasn't. Mm. You know, so I did feel bad. And how do you feel about the presence of women in vinyl? I feel like there's quite a few strong characters. Is there anyone in particular that has particular traits that you kind of feel like, you know, she's strong, she's a hero? Um, it would have to be for me the sandwich girl. Yeah. You know the sandwich girl. Yeah. She's got quite a strong, strong character. She's very interested in that um, new band, the Nasty Bits, yeah. I think they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. we'll have to see what happens with Nasty Bits. I'm not a fan of them. No, uh, I hope I. they scrap them, to be honest. Yeah, they're not too. the nicest band. But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for vinyl. So we'll have to wait until next week. Uh, thank you to our amazing guests for joining us once again. Thank you thank so you. much for coming in. Thank you for having us. And be You're sure welcome. to watch it next week. Um, and please join us next time when we will be talking about the Oscars. Bye for now.